So Billy didn't call and tell us. He didn't need to. Why? Hey, well, everybody, it's Roya. What I'm asking you is, did Billy schedule it and forget the time? Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. We all at. <clears throat> Hope everybody is having a wonderful Saturday. Let's see who's first in the room. Let's see who shows up first on deck. Let's see who pops up. Uh, uh-oh, I see who it is. It is Christina. What's up, Christina? Shot town Um... Is it Makitha and Leah and Tashi Tashiana? Damn, ooh, that was a tricky one. I thought it was Tashina's Tashiana and Maribel. Y'all come on in. Happy Saturday to everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, Shanita, good afternoon. And Honey Bay. Danielle Weaver. Everybody good? What y'all up to on a Saturday? Not getting that work done? Did y'all go eat? Um, did we go eat? Yeah. Me and Ross? Ross and I did go eat. We, go we went to... Uh, <laughs> we went to Claudine's Kitchen. We sure did. What's up, Cassandra? Okay, Teresa, you said you are a new viewer from Kansas City. Well, welcome, Teresa. And shout out to Kansas City. We're glad to have you. Uh, what up, Laquita? So from Kansas City, Teresa, uh, is this your first time watching After I Do Live? Have you, have you gone back and watched some of the videos in our library? A lot of good videos in there. Pull some of that stuff up and check it out. Um, Dallas is in the building. What up, though, Val? Um, Val Hair Life, that is. Jennifer Ray. Let me see if, um, what we're going to try to do today is add some folks. If you, anybody wants to come on live with us and ask a question, we're going to try to add that feature. But just know that if you go live with us and we add you to the conversation. You need to be somewhere with some decent light and you need to have your settings set so that we can hear you. And we just ask that you come on, share your question, and then we'll let uh, April and I will discuss it with everybody else here on the feed. All right. Um, really trying to fine tune the process and elevate because Facebook seems to be making this so difficult when it doesn't have to be. Um, what up, Wanda Stingley? Uh, April Trisha says she loves you. Thank you. So, I didn't do anything to April. April is right I mean, here. I went to yoga. I was wet, so I had to change my shirt really quick. And did yoga help you today? It did. It's tough as hell, and um, I'm just mad that I'm so fat. Mm -hmm. I am. But... I talk about that enough. I'm getting there. I have it's a to process. Just, yeah. I can't stop, though. A lot of the poses I can't do because, you know. Hey, Melanie. Yes. Right. Def Jam 25. <laughs> a lot of people are actually watching Def Jam 25. I did not Even see though it. I thought they should have included me in the show, but, you know, it is what it is. It's all good. Hmm. That they even added a clip of me is meaningful. Um, Linnell says you're not fat. <laughs> Thank you. But when you're looking in the mirror and you see that gut and you in warrior position and you got blue and you're like, oh my God, so you suck in and, you know, trying to do your poses. I'll be right back. I need that towel. Yep. I don't have to say it. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. But. That's how I feel. Um, okay, so Teresa's not upstairs, but it's my first time saying hello. Okay, well, we love you back, Teresa. I'm glad you, uh, you're on board. This is watching from D.C. Oh, what up, Leggy? Um, I'm trying to get back to D.C. to spend more time. And we're even considering moving, uh, at least picking up a second yeah. residence in mm -hmm. D.C. Or just a lot of nice pieces there. Yup. I want something in D.C. So a lot or of nice pieces. 
I don't know. I think I'm more. What up, Kelly Mitchell? Leaning more towards New York. But That's it what? would make more sense to get something in D.C. for the boys, right? You got two boys that will more than likely be at Howard University. So that's eight years. What up, Bridget from B-more? All right, enough so, of the shout-outs. I can't do that all day long. Yeah. Hola, 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 everybody. We need, oh, I was going to say we need a real tip, but we have <laughs> got your sister-in-law. Yeah, and your to, brother. Lord Jesus, they would kill us. Exactly. And I Never got my, mind, my friend. I got a realtor. <laughs> my little sister, Freddie, who also, her and her husband sell real estate. Oh, my God. That's a very couples kind of um, uh Endeavor, occupation. real yeah, yeah, occupation or we can do it. You want to sell real estate? No, I don't want to sell real estate. I'm, <laughs> I'm good with what I'm doing. We can do that together. We have one kill each other. I would house. strangle you. Yeah, I don't. Anything yeah. that's gonna cause you to strangle me, I don't want to be a part of. No, we could not do it. Um. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, I said the same thing. How is it? I need advice. Been through so many. Let's get to the questions. Um been through so many relationships that made me bitter uh now i'm married my best friend from 30 years ago i still have some stank in me i need to figure out you need to figure out what who is this trina glover trina glover what is there to figure out if you married your best friend from 30 years ago i have a question been married 38 years So much probably has happened in past relationships that trigger something, and she probably lashing out, taking it out on the good guy, and he don't have nothing to do with it. And I understand because I used to do the same damn thing. Um, it's a process. As long as you're not abusive and really putting him through the ringer, I think you should be open about it, have a conversation with him, and discuss what it is that what that stink, and if you're carrying it. And putting it on him when it's not him. Um, Ellison Dimples, or I don't, not, I do not understand what the question is. So you gotta have to rephrase it for me. Um, um, so do you understand what she's saying? It's like yeah, it's you hold on to some negative it. energy yeah. that has nothing to do with the new relationship. I'm hoping it has nothing to do with the new relationship. Hopefully, he's not doing some of the, you know, has some of the patterns that the other people have to make you to cause you justifiable stankness. Or is it in your brain because he's saying something and you like, mm -hmm, last person said that they was doing a ABC, had a whole nother family over there, but that's not him. If it's that, then you mentally, you got to get over it. But you have hey, to have Alana a conversation from Georgia. with him. Hopefully it's not interfering in your marriage and causing problems because if it is, baby, you need to fix that. You need to fix it because you don't want to run somebody that is doing good, you know, or has your best in, uh, has your best what interest 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 in mind and you're giving him your ass to kiss because you just don't you know you don't trust once that trust is broken whether it's that person or somebody else it's a hard thing to get back to start trusting somebody you just have to choose to you know and until god forbid it's broken then you deal with it then but you have to choose to say okay let me go balls to the wall. Let me just do what I need to do. Let me be in love. Let me live in the moment. There's nothing. Don't think about what could happen and, you know, if he did or what if. You have to So be hold on. In Trina said, yes, exactly, April. That's what it is. I'm not abusive. I just tend to snap easily. Yeah. I understand. Uh, I understand my wrong and I admit it's, admit to it. He's well, a wonderful blessing. Yes. Not him is the past. Yes, it's not him is the past. Okay, so you need to, while he understands, there's going to be a point where it's going to be too much. He's going to be like, look, you know, and you don't know when someone has their breaking point and you don't want for your snaps for every time. I understand, I understand. Because at some point he's going to be like, look, I had enough, you know, and you don't want to cause him to go outside and get the peace and quiet that he needs because he don't know when you're going to snap. So, you're going to have to just live for now. He's a good guy. Do your darndest, pray on it, and be with him. Don't be with the past. Be with him now. Enjoy him. Respect him. Honor him. And until otherwise, or maybe not otherwise, just do what you need to do to keep this relationship strong because you don't want it to break up because he can't take your snapping or 
you go. Yeah, it gets on. to be too much after a while. It's like, like no, nobody wants to live in it. That. Nobody wants to be a part of it. Right. It just gets to be too much. So Karen's question is, can a relationship last with no trust, even though your partner is trying everything to gain your trust back and you have a son together? She said, I find myself angry over things that happened a long, I'm assuming, time ago. With this person? Yeah, with the same person. Yeah, so the trust was broken. They're thing. still together. I mean, the same. It, what I just said for the young lady, is it you can take parts of it. Until the next time or not the next time, you have to live in the moment. You're going to have to give them a chance to do right. If you're not, if you're always popping or on edge or, you know, beating them to it, then it's never going to work. It's never going to work. You got to get to a point where, you know what? You're good. You're doing good for yourself. You're taking care of yourself. And if somebody knows that and chooses to still shit on you after you've given them everything, mm -hmm. then you move on. But right now, if he's doing what he needs to do and you have nothing to prove that anything is going on, you got to let that guard down, babe. You have to. Yeah, because what it does you is have to. it puts you in a constant state of stress. Yeah. And it locks you out of the ability to enjoy what's happening in the moment. Even if the trust was broken in the past, again, to April's point, you have to make a decision about enjoying what's going on in the moment right now. Right now. Until something different happens. Right. And then when something happens that's different, yes, then you have to make a decision about whether this is something you can maintain, how many times you've had the conversation, whether it's worthy of you continuing to, again, is this now becoming habit forming and a cycle that somebody's just not trying to or going to break? All of these things you have to consider, but in the moment when nothing, you know, when nobody's giving you a reason, right? You robbing yourself of the opportunity to enjoy what's happening, even out in the universe, all of these other things, because now you're in the prison of something that happened a long time ago or a short while ago that's not happening right now. And I can tell you another thing. Whatever is going to happen, you can't prevent it. So with that said, be the best you. Enjoy life, because whether you want it to happen or not, it's going to happen. So... Don't rob yourself of whatever makes you happy. Getting your hair done, getting your nails done, living, going out to dinner, still having date night. Do what feeds you because no matter what, if it's meant to be or something's going to happen, it's going to happen. You cannot stop anything from happening. So live in the moment and be good where you are and prayerful that it won't happen. But if it does, you have not wasted any time in moping, in not enjoying yourself, and making yourself look good, and being all down, and you know, wearing sweat. You know, women just go inward. You know, they start dressing. You know, not taking care of themselves because they so so worried about what could possibly happen. Girl, you better act like okay. If it do happen, Negro, I I look great. I'm great. I'm going to figure it out, and I'm gonna keep moving. If you get all into this homey stage. And God forbid something does happen. Now you got now, to now you dig. out there a mess and trying yeah, to find you yourself to all over all again. All over again. You got to okay, girl. I'm a shed. I gotta go shopping. I gotta get myself. You start from scratch. Don't start from scratch. Be fabulous live your biggest every life. Day. Live now, your you, biggest life regardless absolutely. of the situation. Be fierce every day. Yeah. So if it happens and y'all stay together, you fierce. If it happens and y'all don't stay together, guess what? You still fierce. Don't let nobody rob you. Every of day your time. you wake up Just. is a day that you could possibly not be here, and you should not stop yourself from living your biggest life. Living every I'm day. I'm telling you, my girlfriend, I haven't heard from her in like three days. I'm like, where are you? She texts me, her cousin in New York dropped dead. He's 36 years old. Just dropped dead. Had a blood clot. No warning. They didn't know. There was no medication. There was no nothing. Just walking. Dead. They're devastated. Here I'm like, she hasn't texted me back. Where is she? I want to see her. She dealing with a crisis that you can't prepare for. Nobody knew it was coming. Family. His wife is in like out of her mind. No one knew. And 36? Yeah, gone. That's a tragedy. Gone. It's horrible. 
So I say that to say tomorrow's not promised. If you, you got to live in, in the moment. You got to be okay with whatever and live your life to the fullest. A person, a significant other should not make or break you. And I know that's easier said than, you know, that, that sounds easy. But Thank they you for shouldn't sharing, control lady, lady. Your, Sorry, your happiness. Like, keep going. If something happens, yes, you're going to be sad. you got to go through the motions. I know it. I've been there. I've been through the motions. It's not easy. But I still had to live. I still had to take care of my kid. I still had to forge forward. And, I, you know, I met Royale. Who knew? You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, and God forbid anything ever happens to us, I'm going to keep going. You know, will I be sad? Whatever. I don't know what emotions I would go through. But prior to Royale, you know, right? relationships don't work out. I've already been scorned. I mean, I've been through cheaters, blah, 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 blah. But you got to keep going. I don't know what more to say. You have to keep going. What I know is I never let myself go. I kept myself looking good. I kept my job. I kept my kid safe. You know what I mean? Wasn't no men laying up in my house. Did just none of that around my kid. Are you insane? Like, no. And that's another thing we need to touch on. Like, these women, y'all want to be loved so bad. Y'all want to be loved so bad, and y'all want it to happen overnight, <sighs> immediately. And that is a problem because now... You know, um, bringing people into your house that you really don't know. And even some people that you do know, it happens. But I'm just talking about the ones that want to be loved. They see the triggers. You got little boys, little girls by somebody else. And you bring in somebody into your house to try and make this family or force it or whatever the case. And you just don't know these people's intentions. And little kids are being hurt every day every day because of this i didn't know and i had to go to the store and i left my babies with someone well i mean you just got to speak to what you're speaking to if you're talking about women inviting men or men inviting women because it happens both ways into their home and now these people who they don't know who they're building brand new relationships with are now preying on these little girls and sometimes oh. these little boys oh my God. it's like that's a that's a real problem it's and it's happening problem. every or, day right Let's take the sex sexual abuse out of it. You bring this man, he ain't never been raised by nobody. Now he trying to chastise your kids oh, man, let me say and something. beating your kids. Hold on, and that's they a whole... tearing these kids up. They punching them like grown men, killing these kids because they're taking out whatever aggression that they have for being less than. You know what I mean? And how they gonna parent your child? They can't. Yeah. I, I listen. Just this to is... say, I gotta do. Girl. This is this is always to me a real sore spot because in our community um, we have the seem to have this preconceived notion with this idea of punishment and whoopings and all of this thing and it's not cute it's not cute uh, I don't know why we have this idea in our head that we have to continue the abusive patterns of our previous generations of parents who learned this had this fucking terrorism because it's a form of terrorism. You know, I've seen people beat kids for the smallest things, the littlest things. And right there, these young ladies and even some of these young men, they don't even have a sense of how to parent. They have no communication skills. They have no understanding of the fact that a child's brain is smaller than the developed adult brain. They cannot remember as as much as an adult, they don't have uh, um, uh, the the span of retention that we have. So they're like fish. Fish don't me remember shit like three seconds later. A uh, fish's life, an entire lifespan, is just like Dory from Finding Nemo, trying to remember shit over and over again. And so the brain is a muscle, right? So it has to be exercised and built up and conditioned so that we retain more things longer, right? So you'll tell a child something, a two or three year old something, and five minutes later, they'll do the same thing over again. And you're so frustrated because you're working two jobs, 
right? You got a boyfriend that's out here doing everything under the sun, and now you're frustrated at him. And now your boss asks you to come in, and so you're mad at your boss, you're mad at your boyfriend, you're mad because the money you were supposed to get didn't come in. Now your phone getting turned off. Mm. You got all of this negative energy in you, and you got this two-year-old child who just won't sit on the potty or who just won't go do coloring or who just won't do the thing you want them to do. And you told them three times already. And now all of a sudden you're so angry that you're abusing, you're abusing, you're not punishing, you're abusing a little child. Yeah. And as quickly as you think you're giving them two little spanks on the butt, it turns into 20 spanks on the butt. And now you just abuse them and hurt them and broke this spirit. And now you're wondering why you have this broken relationship with your child that you've been abusing from day one. And what it does is they repeat the behavior. So these are the bullies that you see in school because they're acting out their aggression. They're mad because of something that happened at home and they don't know how to channel that. So they're going to pick on the, the weakest link to get that feeling off of them and put it on somebody else it's just a cycle listen i was it's i was i cycle. was whooped when i was little it's 14 of us i had 11 brothers and two sisters we were whooped my father was overworked my mother was overwhelmed and when he came home it was whoever was sitting on the steps and you got a whooping with a belt a switch an extension cord anything they could find it was abuse as an adult we don't april knows we don't beat our kids i don't have that right and April has one way of parenting, but we had to come to a, a, a resolution about, no, this is the way we parent our young men. I don't want them walking out into the universe with this abusive ass relationship between us as parents and them as our children. Right. And I'm not going to lie. It took some getting used to because I'm so conditioned to getting whoopings. I grew up in New York. My mom was single. When I do something, she kicked my ass. You know what I mean? So that's what I know. So when we had the kids, I was like, uh-uh, I'm about to beat them. And Royale, we had to come together, meeting of the minds, and both of us have been spanked and, you know, beat. And we had to do something different because this is our household. It, we don't ha it doesn't have to work for everybody else, but we had to talk about it and why we shouldn't consider, con uh, continue down that road of beating. And it took some getting used to because I didn't know that you could get probably more done by not beating because i just was like my mom would kick my it's just ass the da, 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 da. Easiest, it just seems like the easiest i didn't realize that the fastest resolution just whoop their ass and uh, I get not, more, we get more done with them talking their ears off and or isolating them, them sitting them kids do not like to be mm -mm. isolated that they time said, out shit beat is me real stop talking don't let this one joey used to be like just make it stop. <laughs> you know but that's the thing we got together we learned and do they get a knockout every now and then if they, like, cross the line? Maybe. If I have to go full gorilla, I can go full gorilla. Right. But there's no, they can't say, I remember I did something, so I got beat down. No. If he say something disrespectful or crazy, you know, it may be like, what? Fat in the mouth. But there's no whoopings. Like, they never got a whooping. And I didn't think that was even possible. But we did it. We raised them, you know. I talk about it. Ross gets terrible. Just me talking about like, I will whoop your... Ross is like, I swear he thinks like, I am so crazy. But it's like so many parents I see but with I this tough talk. Them. You know what I mean? It's like, knock the tough talk off and try to find... Start, try to start with love. Because more of these kids actually will respond to being loved than they will to being abused. Right? You, you gotta start with love. These kids gotta know that you love them. It takes a lot of patience Right. It takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of communication. But you. Um, That's the thing. You sit, you're you hitting it. The so, Naja, I'm, I'm sharing. I'm sharing your your question is probably coming in a little late with the alternative to spankings. If you depending upon the age of a child, if you start young um, and isolate them and sit them down and say you're not getting up until you and explain to a child and see this is the hard part it's like with a two or three or one year old four year old you may have to explain it two three four five times but eventually they will get it but again uh chevelle yes it has to start with love these kids have to know that they're loved first you can't be coming from a place of anger when you're trying to correct a behavior right you're trying to correct a, correct a behavior that requires understanding. And so many of you parents get so frustrated and overwhelmed. You, you missed the piece 
that is missing with the lack of understanding versus what you want the new behavior to be. So you skip over this step and you just start beating them and punish them because they did something wrong. What's wrong? When, you, when you're new to a world, you've been in the world for 30 years, 35, 40 years. You got somebody that's brand new to the world. The world is a huge universe with that's all of these new things. They just got here. They just got here. They don't they know. Too. It's Listen, it's like dropping you off in China. You don't speak the language at all. And now we expect you to understand the customs, the language, how to get around, what's right from wrong, what the laws are. That's a child's experience in the universe. And just because you dress them up to look like they're 12, 13, 14 years old does not make them 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. You better preach. Hello? Day two and three. Day two and three, and y'all trying to make them 28. They don't as know. As soon as you put some they goddamn Jordans them. on them and some, some freaking, you know, expensive ass clothes. Shit. And it ain't the right or the wrong shit, but it's like, stop putting these expectations on children that they are not prepared to be able to manage their brain is not developed enough you want to do all of this stuff with them you want take the time to read to them take the time to to do something fun with them take the time to play with them stop sitting them down and isolating them to have them do these menial tasks that you think they can giving them your phone and put them on a game in your phone and now that's supposed to hold them while you over here on the phone with your girl doing some other shit that ain't got nothing to do with Building a relationship with your child that they eventually will build value out of. I'll give them an iPad. Oh, here, here's an iPad. Go sit over there and play this menial game that ain't doing no, it ain't building no brain cognitive uh, uh, reasoning for them whatsoever. And there's a time and place for everything. If you're trying to cook and you're busy, I get it. But you're not cooking all night. Like, but this speaks to this speaks to the breakdown in the family structure and why it becomes so important for young ladies on the young on the female side to challenge men to become the men that can be in their life that can help them build something greater than just these one off experiences with a hot sweating fuck you know, or a cuddle buddy or somebody that lay beside you and that shit felt good. And now, and now, and now he's gone. And now you're right back to square one and you're, and, frustrated. And you're frustrated and you're frustrated. Right. Cause it's his job. Right. And so now on the man side, you know, be willing to, as a man, step up and offer something to these women, right. That allows them to be able to live in something and enjoy the security of something that's more than this little 35 minutes of sweating and humping on them so you can move on to the next one thank you beverly for sharing can, can i ask you guys to everybody share? hit the share button if you can real quick that would be because this is a very really nice. really important conversation yeah. because again to april's first point what happens is um you bring these young men into your life that are out here wild and doing, you don't know them. They drinking, they smoking weed. They got a gun in the car and then you in the car with them. And then you putting your car, your baby in the car with them, you know, and putting your entire, your, your entire future and the future of your child now is at risk because you think it's cool to jump in a car with some cat just because, oh, I'm too good for the bus or it's more convenient for me to take a ride with this dude that I just met a month and a half ago. You know, you don't know him. You don't know his history. You don't know a damn thing about him. But you're willing to put your Thanks entire you future, sharing. your entire future at risk, you know, just for this little one-off experience or trying to build something that, uh, again, with somebody that you don't know. The bottom line, people want to be loved. And you think that attention is love. It's not. It's just you. Yeah, you got to recognize the difference between attention and love. Yeah. It's just you're the one for right now working the hardest for his attention or her attention. And they're going to give it to you. And once they get what they want, they're moving on. Nine out of ten times. I've been there. Nine out of ten times, you're not the one. You're just a piece. And, you know, you call it age, maturity, whatever. You know when it's the right person. You know what I mean? And you're vying for their not attention. Only and, and he'll give it to you because they, you know, young men, they get tired too. they like, let me just give her a little bit so she could just calm down. And then they're moving on. Trust me, they are moving on. You are not it. Yeah, I think this is a, a is it Jonah? Are not it. Jonah, I think you make a good point. It's like the lack of love, the lack of love puts so many people in positions where the attention becomes a thing that they're willing to settle for. There you go. You're willing to settle for attention uh, because you don't, you're not 
in a situation where the person that you're you're relating to is willing to give you what is unconditional love and not only love. but not even not only love unconditional love but the clarity this is important but the clarity of what you all are trying to and can build together and that's where that we talk about communication all the time and having somebody willing to be willing to show up and be their authentic self right to you one on one is like who are you really right so many people get in these relationships with somebody two, three, four, five, six months down the line, a year down the line, like, and you get to the point where you're like, you're laying beside somebody, you go like, who are you? I don't even know you, right? Because you didn't take the time to get to know them before allowing them to be in your personal space the way they are now and to allow them to get comfortable in your personal space the way they are now. They all laying in your bed completely comfortable. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, this is good. I'm good here. But you didn't challenge them to find out who they are so that you can know. No. Fast and furious. They don't care. Microwave baked relationships. It's all microwave. Ding, 30 seconds. Let's go. Mm. Ding, 30 seconds. Let's go. Nope. And again, these are soul ties, right? You start getting these relationships with somebody and opening up your entire spirit to them. Ugh. Right? So it's one thing. To, to be in a position where you're lusting after someone and saying, oh, you know what? I'm clear. Excites me about them, right? That's one thing. But you have to be clear about that. And if that's what you are pursuing, okay. As long as you're clear about it, there's nothing wrong with saying, I want to build something with somebody that's, that's just. Could be problematic for you. That is. And then they have children. And then it's just, it's a vicious cycle. These people, people want, everybody is searching for love. You want to be loved. I get it. But it's not love. But let me tell you something to this point that somebody else just made. It's like, yes, just like when you're on a computer and you go through these sites, there's a digital footprint left for everywhere you go on a computer. So mm -hmm. you do something that's how they're able to track these criminals. It's like you can't do anything on the Internet without leaving a digital footprint. Right. right? I don't care what you, you think is gone. History. You can delete it. You do all that stuff it's you want. Still there. <laughs> there is a digital footprint for everything that you do and everywhere everything. that you go. Right. And so in the same regard, for every person that you come into communication with, there is an emotional footprint. There is a emotional footprint. A piece of your soul is left along the way for right. every person that you come in communicate, no matter how deep the communication with. Right. Right. April and I went to the bank. There was an issue with somebody at the bank. I had a conversation with the guy. Even after April left, I had a conversation with the guy. And it was hostile. The conversation turned hostile. Right? Sometimes I can get a little hot-headed. And I don't blow up. Like, people in the bank don't know what's going on. But I'm very clear. I'll have a conversation with you. Tell you. But the impression that was left on my spirit when I left the bank was not was not healthy for me. Right? So that that was a spiritual footprint that was left a little piece of me in that exchange. Like, so now I have a relationship with this human being, whether I see him again or not, I now have a relationship with him based on a negative experience. Right. And what good is, what, what real value is that putting that out into the universe? Right. So we have to do a better job of being clear about what our expectations are and what, um, what our intentions are. It's true. This was a good one. So, Naja, you said let's talk about men too. Quit jumping into relationships or pretending to be in relationships with someone when all you want to have is sex, right? So, yes, men do it all the time. I think that a lot of men do this out of insecurity, right? So many men in the universe are trying to find themselves. They're trying, it's a caveman mentality. They're trying to establish something that makes them feel good about who they are in the universe and trying to establish who they are for the greater universe to see so they can point to themselves and say, I am man, hear me roar, right? Mm 
And so as a part of that journey, men have been taught that through sexual exploitations, for some reason, they think that this gives them another notch on their belt. If you heard that term, it gives them more hair on their chest. It fires their testosterone more because the truth of the matter is women are attracted to the bigger, stronger, more dominant males. Right. So when you see uh, animals in the wild, you see uh, lions that grow large manes is to give them a larger presence. You'll see silverback gorillas that stand up tall and they beat their chest and they grow louder. This is all part of testosterone, what it means to be a male, what it means to be a man in the greater sense that uh, a society has established, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that you have to ascribe to it for each individual man. I don't subscribe to that. What I know for a fact is that women have to challenge men, right? Just as men are going to go out here and try to do all that they can to, to, to sleep with whoever they want to sleep with, women have to ask the question. Women have to ask the questions like, what are your intentions? What do you want from me? How long, you know, you can't, you're a woman. You have to challenge men so that you get what you need to get out of the relationship and not be hurt. If somebody wants to just have sex, ask them. It's like, what, do you just want to have sex with me? Well, let's talk about that. What does that look like? Are you trying to build something long term with me? Well, what does that look like? You know, I think it's easy for women to say, well, men this and put it on men. It's like, no, you, you know, you when you that. grow into right. the grocery store, you know exactly what you want. Yes, Sheree, right. we are animals. We are animals. We are human beings, but we are animals of this planet. Right. We are. We can't deny it. We are a species of the, the greater part of the animals that are on this planet. We're more evolved. Yes, we, we're so evolved that we've labeled ourselves different. But we still have teeth. We have hands, feet. There's, we're no different than the animals. We're just more evolved than they are. Of course, men will lie. Naja, we men, when, when women lie too. That's true. Men lie. Women lie. Everybody lies. But again, this is where we get this conversation about trying to have convers. Babe, babe, you can't. Trying to have authentic conversations with real human beings. It's that simple. And all you can do is go into it with your best intentions to try to, to, to have a real conversation with somebody. But eventually all of these things reveal themselves. And you actually know. In your spirit, you do most you of the know. time. In your spirit, you hang in there. That's on you. What happened? Nothing. Oh. Yeah, you know. Um, I'm not gonna say that. As women, I think we really know. Do you have the courage to leave it alone? So, Cherie, you said you disagree. Animals can't make conscious choices. So, you're telling me that a dog, a pig, a ape, a gorilla. With all that we've seen with animals and some of the things that they do, that they can't make conscious choices. Um, if they see fear, they're, they're not going to walk toward it. They're going to run. That's a conscious choice to run or go the other way. I don't think that. We have happen. brains. Yes, we have brains. But monkeys have brains, too. Uh, animals have brains. Pigs have brains. Dogs have brains. So... No, we can agree to disagree, but again, I think we are a, we the human, we have labeled ourselves human beings, but, and we've labeled them animals to separate ourselves. Yeah. So, you, Sheree, you're saying that's, that's instinct? What's instinct? Educate me. I'm always open to learning something new. Wait, Sheree, are you? I can add you to the call, Sheree. Matter of fact, Sheree, are you available? I can add you to the call if you want. Um, it was just it up trying to try and I will be the old lady with the cats. <laughs> Janai, you don't have to be the um old lady with the cats. Get out there and continue to date and find you someone. Find you someone. There's always still someone out there. Right. Don't settle, but don't, don't start looking. You know 
what you want and you know you could call bullshit when you see it. Just keep it moving. And I think you should date. I think you should keep your options open. If that's what you want. If that's what you want. Some people are plenty fine, you know, living their life, the rest of their journey by themselves. For some people, they just decided that I'm happier just dealing with me for the rest of this journey instead of dealing with people that I don't trust, that I can't build something real with. Because, you know, it's a lot of people out here that are full of shit, period. Yeah. Um, Sheree, can I add you to the call? You want to? Where? Wait, where are you, Sheree? Uh, can they? Can you ask them to share? Them something they could commit to. They were having sex with new people day or week one. Okay, that's due to choices, but they still fully follow their calling. Okay. Humans have the ability to reason. Correct. But I think I think. Animals have the ability to reason as well. I just think that we make the assumption because we're doing the study and that we know everything we need to know about animals, which is um, selfish as up. So hold on, uh, Sharia, I'm add you to the call. Let me see if you will. Let's see if we can get Sharia to pick up the call. She has a Samsung, I think. Can she do it on the same side? It's inviting her, so. Okay. Okay, ladies hey. and gentlemen. Sheree, what's happening? What's going on? I'm all in the kitchen looking amazing. Why well, get your hand off the, you're supposed to do that before you, just leave the camera where it is. <laughs> no, this is, this is good. This is just going, this is what's real right now. Okay, oh. so. What are you, you are you saying that we are not animals, Sheree? Is that your argument? Okay, so I said this. I was starting to type. This might be more of a, a deeper philosophical, theological conversation. But sure. The, di the the human beings are dynamic in that we are spirit, soul, body, and what we do is we tend to succumb to the body nature, the animal nature of us, and define ourselves by our animal nature. But we're more than that. We've evolved beyond just being an instinctual being that does um, that acts just for just for existence, just for safety. That fight or flight in us—that's the instinctual animal nature. But we have a high sense, which is called, and which is that that we can then vibrate on a spiritual level. Um, that activity—that's a that, that's a different level. And when we start to build relationships, we want to be in that level. We don't want to just come into our physical nature. And there is so that that's okay we, we we do have a physical urge but we also have mental things going on and then we have the higher spiritual and it's like that unity that we're trying to get to with somebody else to recognize and to connect with someone on all of those levels that makes that relationship that's why y'all can laugh and joke and have a good time over there and talk about the hard stuff and move through the hard stuff because there's a connection not just on the animal level that'll go not feeling each other that that mental connection that will go away when you're not agreeing with each other but when you have that higher spiritual connection that brings everything else back into alignment when it needs to be done so i that that's my perspective on it that's why i was like nah not not animals not just animals we can't well okay okay so i can rock with that I, absolutely this is where you know i'll give facebook and technology credit for allowing this type of engagement because there's no way in the world you was going to type all of that. <laughs> I know, right? And get the point across. Um, no, we did three-way so, on Facebook Live. I didn't know. Oh, no. we can, Yeah, yeah. This is all, listen, they got a solution for everything. Uh, I got to catch up. They can get it done. Um, but, so you're saying there's no, no Buddhist gorillas out there? You're saying there's no Protestant monkeys running around? I'm, I'm saying, hopefully not. Hopefully they they don't they don't make those same mistakes we made by being locked in. Oh my goodness! Um, and I'm not I'm not dissing anybody's religious tradition, but I mean the locked in that's like being getting that it's just a language. If you can believe that it's just a language and that we're all communicating to God in our language, we can stop being so divisive about it. And maybe I can learn your language. Maybe I can appreciate your language, but I don't have to vilify it and call it something that's gonna 
damn you to eternal eternal hell. But that's again, this is not, this was supposed to be but a listen, relationship. But, it, but what's amazing is, but what's amazing is how fast people are to buy into the mentality that the ownership that they kind of have taken over one specific school of how's the isn't any anybody else who does not subscribe to that same school of thought like on a religious kind of philosophical theological level and it's to your point it's just are you an april saved are you christian are you that and people have such a need and desire to connect with other people on on one thing you know what I mean? Yes. That it just separates their ability to be able to connect with way more people on this whole big thing. It's like, we don't practice any of that. We hear, It's all about humanity for me. Mm -hmm. I believe April as well. It's about, are you a human being? Are you making conscious choices as a human being to help grow the, the universe and other people and stay open? Which is, again, probably like we're not seeing that in the president. And so it's causing all of this disruption in the universe right. in our world right now because mm -hmm. people aren't being human first. We don't know how to disagree and, and without feeling like it's taking something away from us. So because I believe differently than you, because I have decided that this language is the best language for me, and I really truly believe this is the language for everybody, because you disagree, then I begin to, it, we build up that hate in our hearts. And that's where we start fighting out and lashing out and succumbing to the animal nature, which is when I feel threatened, I then begin to fight. And so when you, just like you said, you walked into the bank and you were hot inside, but the people in the bank couldn't tell, is that there's a, there's a resistance that you had. You realize I'm not my animal nature. I got a mind. And so you didn't go off in the bank like some people do because we don't mature beyond our physical urges. So I, I, I think that when, you're, when we're looking, when we're searching for someone to connect with, we got to, I'm not saying to stop and do all your personal spiritual work first, but you got to do it too. And you got to begin yeah. to ask questions so that you can grow with somebody in a way that, um, in a way that can be lasting. Because I think people want like lasting real stuff. And if you don't deal with the three parts of yourself, if you don't deal with the animal stuff, if you don't deal with what's going on in your mind, if you don't have any kind of connection or language to communicate in the spirit, you a mess, and you're going to attract a mess. I'm through with it, God dang it. We're going to have to do a <laughs> round table here in L.A. real soon so that we can, I'm between in. you and, and, and Milo Edwards, boy, we're going to be a real problem for him in a minute. I'm in. I'm in. Thank you for connecting me in. Hey, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you for carving out the time. But we're going we're gonna to continue the conversation offline so when we do the round table, did I just see Dr. Milo throw up the uh the thumbs up? Is he is <laughs> Milo you on the thread, bro? Yeah, um, yeah. Hold on. So so Cherie, we'll connect with you offline because what I want to do is um as soon as I'm here in town on a Saturday we can start the round table. Uh especially if I can get um, Dr. Edwards uh involved as well. We're gonna set something sure. up here in LA first just because we can move on it and get it done. And you're looking good. You're looking like you're drinking the water. You're getting some rest. You're looking like them young boys hitting on you. Look at you. Go ahead, Sheree. You look like love. Y'all got me out of here. Hey, listen, whether the kitchen or the bedroom, it ain't don't hurt to sweat, Sheree. Just, you know, make it happen. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. All right. Enjoy well, the rest love of you guys. Time, sweetie. We'll talk. Okay. You too. We'll talk. Let me see. Let me see. All right. So that's our friend Sheree Thompson. Milo Edwards, but maybe it wasn't him. Maybe they should get the share. Um, because it's a good combo. Um, so yeah, if everybody could just hit the share button real quick, we can continue the conversation. Uh, it is two fifty-two. I actually have to perform tonight. So, um, what up, Trish Dawson? Thank you for tuning in. Um, but this is this is like what the real value I think of this platform is. This is why April and I are so appreciative when you all tune in and join the conversation. Um, 
uh, where we can exchange some real dialogue. And again, it's relationships, love and laughter. But the platform has the opportunity for us to create a larger dialogue um, that reaches so many people and can go so many different ways. Um, Jared Walker, what up, bro? Linda Carter, thank you for sharing. Uh, and this is what we want to do. This is, you know, we're working on getting this platform to grow. We're reaching, trying to reach more people. When you share it, if you could tell your friends to join the conversation with April and Royale, the After I Do platform, our desire is to, you know, reach a half million up to upwards of a million people so we can become our own self-sustaining kind of platform and show and be out on the road and building with you all right. directly. We don't have to, we don't have to chase TV. If TV wants to be in business with us, great. But we can get it all done through Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and coming to your city. Thank you, Jennifer Michaels, for sharing. Um, so that's what it is. I know a lot of people have questions. A lot of people tune into the conversation sometimes just because they saw something shared on their um, on their news feed. And they kind of wonder into these Facebook lives and go, well, who, who is this guy? I think I've seen him before. Um, uh, Yes, me. Thank you for that. I, I get it. Yeah. Listen, Facebook is not a perfect platform, um, especially with all of these kind of uh, tragedies that are going on in the universe with the weather. Uh, <laughs> uh, hilarious, Cherie. She said her turkey burger is super dry, but it was worth it. Um, so I wish I had one. So listen, don't expect Facebook, YouTube, or any of these systems to be completely perfect. Um, the net, internet is not a perfect place. Sometimes, you know, we'll freeze or whatever, but if you could just be patient and hang in there, it doesn't usually take longer than 15 or 20 seconds for us to come back in. Um, we're working, April and I are working on making sure we have the best connection here at the house. In fact, we're getting ready to spend some money to upgrade everything throughout the house to make sure we stay connected. Um, but again, you guys just have to be willing to be patient and help us grow and grow with us as we continue to kind of uh, do what we can and make the uh, make the platform grow larger. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, uh, is it Desiree? Desiree? Desiree. Oh boy, y'all these names could be tough. Thank you for sharing. I see all the people that are sharing. Um, thank you, thank you. So yes, that was me on FTM twenty five. For those that don't know, uh, yes, I am a stand up comic writer and producer and director. But stand-up comedy is my base. It's how I make my living. Um, and so I was fortunate enough to be added to uh, Def Jam 25. Um, and so if you go to Netflix and check it out, you'll see me on there clipping them in the audience. Uh, um, but, I'm sta you know, stand-up comedy is how I make my living. Um, hey, Cherie, if you're on Instagram or social media, you should share it so that the folks that want to follow you can follow you on social media you can follow me if you're not already following me at royale watkins r-o-y-a-l-e w-a-t-k-i-n-s at royale watkins um so uh i think we we accomplished a lot today we did uh i can't hang out for a long time because i got like i said i gotta go perform tonight I'm down in Brea at the uh, the Brea Imp Improv with Mike Epps this weekend. So two more shows tonight, one tomorrow. I think we're in San Diego next week. Oh, really? Um, so, yes, I'm out performing again, doing as much as I can. Then I'm back in New York, October the 15th at Gotham Comedy Club. So if you're in New York City, New Jersey, Connecticut, anywhere close, you should come check us out at Gotham Comedy Club on Sunday, October the 15th. Um and you know we're always here you know april is going to start back working very soon her schedule pick up so as often as we can go facebook live and stay connected to y'all we will be doing it but we ask that you again help us grow the platform tell your friends and tell a friend about after i do relationships love and laughter um and let's keep having a conversation if you have questions if we weren't able to get to your question you can always inbox us here on this platform uh, I will be sharing the Shopify play page with the After I Do t-shirts uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, Yasmin is asking, do you go to my shows? Um, do I go? Yes. What shows? She's at my comedy shows. Oh, I do when they're local. I just haven't, uh, I didn't go to one in Brea. <clears throat> San Diego, I might go. But um, 
No, he travels a lot, so I can't just jump on a plane. I work, so I can't. Um, if I wasn't working, I'd be on the road. Naja, we'll we'll be doing the after I do after dark again soon. Uh, we were working with some folks that were trying to position us to do a show, and they asked us to pull back a little bit because they were, you know, their um, the after I do the after darks are a little what's the word that I'm looking for? Risque. They're risque. Um, yes, is the exact word I was looking for. So they're a little risque, but you know, April and I just decided like, yo, this is our platform. We're gonna do what we want to do, and so the next weekend that I'm off and we have an opportunity, we're gonna knock out another after I do after I do after dark. So we'll be back with those. So I'll be packing the bag. Yes. I love the pack a bag. Pack a bag. So um, I'm going to wish each and every one of you a continued blessed Saturday. I want y'all to be healthy. I want you to tell somebody you love them. I want you to make the most of your life. Live your biggest life now. Regardless. Stop waiting. I don't care whether you chunky. I don't care whether you got 100 pounds to lose. I don't care what you're going through. If you're sick, if you got cancer, if you got dandruff. I don't give a fuck. Live your biggest life now. Your health is going to be greatly enhanced by your happiness. Yep. And you need to write that down because I said it here first. Your health is going to be enhanced by your happiness. The happier you are, the healthier you're going to be. I don't care what it is. Whatever you got, happiness is going to chase that bullshit away. Or it's at least going to help chase it away. So whatever you do, work to clear that bullshit out of your life so that you can be on a path to happiness. That's what matters. All right? So peace and blessings. Y'all be good. Enjoy your Saturday. Um, say goodnight, Florida. Good night. We'll catch y'all later.